You're looking at a frozen rock older than the sun. Not from here, not from anywhere near here. A comet that's been drifting through the Milky Way for seven billion years, maybe longer, just passed by Mars. ExoMars Trace gas orbiter caught it. Barely, the cameras could barely see it. October 3rd, 2025. The comet was 30 million kilometers from the spacecraft. That's 18.6 million miles. Sounds far, but in space terms, that's close. Close enough to photograph. Except there's a problem. The cameras weren't built for this. Cassie's. The color and stereo surface imaging system, designed to photograph Mars from a few hundred kilometers up. Bright planet, close range, simple math. But 3i Atlas wasn't bright. It wasn't close. Nick Thomas, principal investigator for Cassie's, said it straight. The comet is around 10,000 to 100,000 times fainter than our usual target. 10,000 to 100,000. That's not twice as faint. That's D by Martin Cordner at NASA Goddard. Now back to the information. Why so faint? Start with what it is. 3i Atlas. Discovered July 1st, 2025 by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Telescope in Rio Hurtado, Chile. Third interstellar object ever confirmed. Third visitor from beyond our solar system. The I stands for interstellar, number three in the catalog. First was 1i Oumuamua, October 2017. Second was 2i Borisov, August 2019. Now this, moving at 58 kilometers per second relative to the sun, that's 130,000 miles per hour. Hyperbolic trajectory, not bound by our sun's gravity, passing through, passing, never coming back. When ExoMars looked at it from Mars, 3i Atlas was already far from Earth, on the opposite side of the sun, impossible to observe from our planet. The comet had approached from the general direction of Sagittarius, from the thick disk of the Milky Way, the thick disk, not where we read 40 meters across. Compare that to Earth. Earth's diameter is 12,742 kilometers. 3i Atlas could fit inside a city block. Small nucleus means less surface area. Less surface area means less material sublimating when the sun heats it. Less sublimation means fainter coma, fainter tail. The Hubble image from July showed almost no tail, just a glow ahead of the nucleus, toward the sun, not the typical cometary tail streaming behind. The dust grains being ejected are large, several micrometers in radius, too heavy for solar radiation pressure to blow back easily, so they pile up in front. Unusual, not what you see in most comets. Then there's composition. James Webb Space Telescope observed three. I Atlas, August 6th, 2025. An IR-spec instrument, infrared spectroscopy. Distance, 3.32 astronomical units from the sun. The data came back strange. Carbon dioxide dominated the coma. CO2 to H2O ratio, 7.6 kilograms per second. Carbonyl sulfide, 0.43 kilograms per second. Those are the emission rates from the nucleus. The coma stretched 180,000 kilometers across by September 15th, 2025. Observations from the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope. Hydrogen cyanide detected. 1.5 times 10 to the 25th molecules per second on September 7th. 4.5 times 10 to the 25th a week later. The comet was waking up, but for Mars, all of that activity was invisible. 30 million kilometers away, the coma that looked so bright in Hubble images was a faint smudge. The spectrometers on Mars Express and ExoMars TGO tried to catch the light. Omega, Spycam, Nomad, all pointed at 3i Atlas. All tried to break down the spectrum, identify molecules. It's uncertain whether they succeeded. The comet might not have been bright enough. Data is still being analyzed. Distance matters. Brightness follows the inverse. Changing viewing geometry helped. The tail that was hidden behind the coma in July became more visible as Earth's angle changed. JUICE, the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, will observe it in November, closer to perihelion, more active. Multiple instruments, cameras, spectrometers, particle sensors, Coordination with NASA's Europa Clipper is being considered. Twin ultraviolet spectrographs, one on each spacecraft. The goal? Catch 3i Atlas when it's brightest, most active, most revealing. Data won't come back until February 2026. JUICE is using its high-gain antenna as a heat shield right now. Too close to the sun to transmit. Why does any of this matter? 3i Atlas is a time capsule. A fragment from a star system that formed billions of years before our sun ignited. It's ices, it's dust, it's organic compounds. They're pristine samples from the early Milky Way. The thick disk stars formed when the galaxy was younger, more chaotic. Lower metallicity, different chemistry. Meter with typical comet density, that's tens of billions of tons. If it's under one kilometer, it's a few billion tons. The mass loss rate, 
Carbon dioxide, water, carbon monoxide, dust, adds up to a few hundred kilograms per second. At that rate, a millimeter thick layer ablates from the surface over 10 years. Thin, but enough to maintain the coma. What's underneath? Unknown, solid ice, rocky core, mixed composition? We can't see through the dust. Faintness from Mars wasn't a failure. It was a data point. It told us the comet is small, less active than expected. CO2 rich, not water rich, dust heavy, not gas heavy. The cameras did their job. They pushed to the limit. Five second exposures in a system built for half second snapshots of the planet's surface. They caught a speck of light from 30 million kilometers, a comet from another star, a visitor seven billion years in the making. October 3rd, 2025, closest approach to Mars. The comet was moving fast, 61 space again, forever. The comet will never be visible to the naked eye. Peak brightness, apparent magnitude, 11.5. You need a telescope, at least three to 4.5 inches aperture. Even then, it's faint, a fuzzy smudge in the eyepiece. Most people will never see it. Most people don't know it exists. But for those watching, those tracking it across the sky, it's proof, proof that we're not alone in this galaxy, not in the sense of life, in the sense of matter, rocks, ice. Comets, they drift between stars, billions of them. 3i Atlas is the third we've caught. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory will find more. Five to 50 interstellar objects per decade, predictions say. Maybe more now that 3i Atlas turned up larger than expected. Why did ExoMars see it so faint? Because it is faint, small, cold, CO2 rich, water poor, dust heavy, gas light, far from perihelion when Mars passed, far from the cameras, 30 million kilometers through the vacuum. Light dimmed late October, then gone, back to the dark, back to the cold. Back to interstellar space, where it's been for most of existence. Mars didn't get a perfect view, didn't need to. The faintness itself was data. The struggle to see it, the five second exposures, the failure of Mars Express to detect it, all consistent with a small CO2 dominated nucleus, far from peak activity. The brightness models matched, the size estimates held, the composition fit, everything lined up. 3i Atlas behaved exactly as a small, ancient, CO2-rich interstellar comet should behave. In November, JUICE will see it brighter, closer to perihelion, more active. In December, JWST will catch it post-perihelion, already fading, already leaving. Observations will continue until it passes too far from the sun, too faint even for the biggest telescopes. By mid-2026, it'll be gone, beyond Jupiter, beyond Neptune, beyond the Kuiper Belt back where it came from, the space between stars, 72 nickel vapor, organic tholins, all from a star that died before ours was born. October 16th, 2025, 3i Atlas is between Mars and the sun now, 17 days from perihelion, invisible from Earth, on the far side of the sun, but not forgotten. Astronomers wait, telescopes ready, models updated. Predictions refined. When it emerges in December, post perihelion, everyone will be watching, everyone will be ready. The comet won't linger, it never does. A few months, a few observations, then interstellar space, then silence. Two weeks ago, a team in Spain and Sweden traced 3i Atlas backward through time. 10 million years. Used Gaia data, stellar positions, velocities, radial velocities, 25 close encounters with known stars. Closest was HD 187760, 72,000 years ago. 3.3 light years, that's one parsec, close in galactic terms. But the velocity change was minimal, 0.001%, negligible, faint, because it is faint, because it's small, because it's far, because it's CO2 rich, because it's old, because it's from another star. Because it's been drifting for 7 billion years, because it wasn't built to shine, it was built to survive, to endure, to drift, and it did, for longer than Earth has existed, for longer than the sun has burned. Three, I Atlas drifted, waited, wandered until it found us, until we found it, until cameras on Mars struggled to see it, until scientists stacked images and measured spectra and ran models and realized what it was. A visitor, a messenger, a fragment of the ancient Milky Way. Here, now, briefly, then gone, forever. In February 2026, the JUICE data will arrive. Scientists will analyze it, compare it to the Mars observations, to Hubble, to JWST, to ground-based telescopes, every wavelength, every instrument, every angle, the picture will sharpen, the uncertainties will shrink, but the core truth won't change. 3i Atlas E. The faint image from Mars was a prelude, a single frame in a movie no one had seen yet. The real show was about to begin.
Perihelion. October 29th, the moment of maximum fire. The point of closest approach to the furnace of our solar system. 1.36 astronomical units. 126 million miles. Close enough. The world's telescopes held their breath. Not literally, but the teams of astronomers did. From the Atacama Desert to the peak of Mauna Kea, schedules were cleared. Instruments were calibrated. The question wasn't if 3i Atlas would brighten. The question was by how much, and what would the light reveal when it did? The models, based on the early JWST data, predicted a surge, a sevenfold increase in outgassing as the sun's heat baked those ancient ices. Carbon dioxide, the dominant volatile, would sublimate furiously. Dust jets, dormant for millennia, would erupt from the nucleus. October 29th came and went. From Earth, the comet-sensitive CCDs of the Very Large Telescope. It wasn't the spectacular tail of a hale -bop. This was a different kind of comet. The dust grains were still large, micrometer-sized, meaning they resisted the push of sunlight. The tail was diffuse, broad and yellowish, indicating silicate-rich dust, not the brilliant blue of an ion tail because the water content was still too low to produce enough ionized water molecules. Everything pointed back to the same conclusion. Old, water-poor, carbon dioxide rich, a product of a different kind of nursery. Then came JUICE, Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, November 10th, 2025. The European spacecraft on its long journey to Jupiter had a front row seat. Its trajectory brought it within 75 million kilometers of 3i Atlas. It turned its suite of instruments toward the visitor. Janus, the high resolution camera, UVS, the ultraviolet spectrograph, PEP, the particle environment package. For 48 hours it stared, and as it moved away from the sun, it swung into a perfect viewing position for the titan of telescopes, the James Webb Space Telescope, December 12th, 2025. JWST pivoted its golden mirrors. Its target was fainter now than at perihelion, but the telescope didn't care. Faint is what it was built for. Nyerspec and Miri, the infrared spectrographs locked on. This was the big one, the post-perihelion autopsy. The sun had peeled back the outer layers of the comet. Deeper, more pristine ices were now exposed. Was the composition the same? Or did the comet's interior hold different secrets? The data streamed back to the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. The initial results were staggering. The carbon dioxide to water ratio had changed. It was no longer 7.6 to 1. It was now closer to 5 to 1. Water production had increased disproportionately. The deeper layers held more water ice. This suggested a layered structure, a history of came Earth's closest approach, December 19th, 2025, a non-event in terms of proximity, 269 million kilometers, far. But it marked the peak for ground-based observation. The viewing geometry was perfect. Amateur astronomers with large telescopes captured stunning images of the now fading coma. For a few weeks, the comet was a celebrity in the astronomical community. A difficult faint target, but a rewarding one. Two months of waiting. Two months of analyzing the JWST data, the VLT spectra, the Gemini images. Then, February 15th, 2026. The signal arrived. Juice had swung far enough from the sun. Its high gain antenna turned toward Earth. The data began to flow. 48 hours of pristine observations. It took days to download and process. A team at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany, worked around the clock. The first images from the Janus camera were breathtaking. Not because they showed a, it added a crucial detail. The carbon isotope ratio, the ratio of carbon 12 to carbon 13. In the solar system, that ratio is about 89 to one. On Earth, in meteorites, in our comets. It's a fundamental constant of our neighborhood. The first JWST data had suggested 3i Atlas was similar, but the more precise UVS instrument on JUICE found a subtle difference. The ratio was 93 to one, a 4.5% deviation, statistically significant, indisputable. It was the first time an extrasolar object had shown a different fundamental isotope ratio, a chemical dialect from another star. Proof, written in the atoms themselves, that this rock was not from here. Then, the PEP instrument delivered its verdict. It had flown through the outer edges of the coma and sampled the dust directly. The grains were indeed large, as inferred from the tail dynamics, but they were also fluffy. Aggregates of smaller silicate and carbonaceous particles held together. Its journey originated from the direction of the Sagittarius stellar stream, a group of ancient stars stripped from a dwarf galaxy that merged with the Milky Way billions of years ago. It wasn't just from the thick disk. It was likely from another galaxy entirely, 
a refugee from a galactic collision that happened before Earth was even dust. How did it compare to its predecessors? One Eye Umwamua was a mystery, small, inert, strangely shaped, accelerating without a visible coma, a true anomaly. Two Eye Borisov was familiar, a comet, much like our own, just visiting. Three Eye Atlas was the perfect bridge. It was clearly a comet, with a coma and a tail and outgassing jets. No one, not even Avi Loeb, could seriously argue it was an artificial probe after the juice data showed its chaotic, tumbling, jet-spewing nature. But it was also profoundly alien. Its CO2 dominance, its layered interior, its fluffy dust, its unique isotopic signature. It was a new class of object, an ancient thick disk. The ExoMars cameras hadn't failed. They had recorded the truth. They had captured the comet in its quiet, inbound state. A baseline measurement that made the subsequent perihelion transformation all the more spectacular. The faintness was not a bug, it was a feature, a defining characteristic of this ancient, weary traveler. By late 2026, it will be beyond Saturn's orbit. Too faint for even the JWST, it will recede back into the darkness from which it came. It will never return. But it leaves a legacy. It has proven that interstellar objects are not just curiosities, they are fundamental tools for galactic archaeology. It has shown that the building blocks of planets, and perhaps life, are transported across the galaxy. It has given us a direct sample of a star system that died before ours was born. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory is coming online soon. It will find dozens more of these visitors. Some will be like Borisov, some will be like Umuamua, and some 